Hello and welcome to our Lockdown Cook School. I'm James Tipton and I've put together some recipes which will help you to cook your favourite dishes using equipment that we all have at home. With this video, there is a spec that accompanies it with written ingredients and a method and some tips of how you can experiment with the dish if you fancy getting a little bit creative and the link for that is in the description. First thing we're gonna to need to make is the actual pizza dough. So in a large mixing bowl, we're going to combine plain flour, the dried yeast, salt and sugar. When we do this, it's great practice to lay them out separately. Now this helps in case we get interrupted while we're working, we can easily see where we got up to. Mix all the dry ingredients together. It's much easier to mix them while they're dry. And then we can add our wet ingredients, the olive oil and just half of the water for now. The water that we're using has got to be body temperature. Now the easiest way to do this is to mix hot and cold water together in a big jug. Test it with your finger and see if it feels either hot or cold. If it doesn't feel either hot or cold, then it's body temperature. And then you can just measure out the amount that you're going to need to use. If the water was too cold, it'd slow down the process and any hot water will create condensation and make it really difficult to work with because it will become sticky. We're gonna mix all of these ingredients together by hand now until it's smooth. Now this is a really messy job and the best way to deal with this is to keep one hand clean and one hand dirty. And wash your hands before and after handling the dough. Add in the rest of the water and continue to mix until it's smooth. We're using dried yeast in this recipe and it's available from most shops in small seven gram sachets. It comes dormant, which means it's basically sleeping, but when it gets moisture back into it, it's gonna become active again. It's slowly getting the moisture it needs to work with from the water that we're adding into our mixture. Once it's active, it's gonna do its thing, which is looking for sugars and eating them, making little gas bubbles as a product. Now we have added sugar to the recipe, but it's really eating natural sugars that are found in flour anyway. And it's this process which makes the dough rise and gives it such a great texture. Okay, so let's fast forward a little bit and we should have a smooth dough inside a clean mixing bowl. That's a good sign that we've used the right amount of measurements and we finish mixing. Once we finish mixing it, the next step is to knead the dough. Now kneading stretches gluten that's inside the dough, which gives it strength and increases elasticity. What that means is it's able to produce little air pockets much easier and you get a much better texture from kneading bread and dough. To do this, we're gonna push the heel of our palm into the dough and then push away along the work surface to stretch it out a little bit and then bringing it back together and repeating that process. And we're gonna do that over and over for for about 10 minutes before we can continue on to the next stages. Okay, great, so we finished kneading the dough. We need to split the batch that we've made down. So we're gonna have enough dough here to make five 10 inch pizzas. Split it into five equal size balls, roughly 200 grams if you're using scales, and shape them with your hands so that they're smooth on top and you can tuck anything underneath any imperfections to make that top smooth. Here we're getting two doughs ready to use later and that's enough for two pizzas or one pizza and two portions of either dough balls or the chocolate and hazelnut horns that we have recipes for. We're going to place those doughs we're going to use later onto a tray or a plate with good space in between them, covering them really well with cling film to stop any air getting in there and we can put them in the fridge. Dough really doesn't like excess air, it will make it dry out and difficult to work with so it's really important that you wrap it well that no air can get inside it at this point. The recipe that we're working from here has most of the proving done really slowly in the fridge. So you're gonna to need to make the dough and leave it in the fridge for between five and seven hours before you use it. Now you can make it in the morning and then eat it that evening, or you can make it the night before if you're gonna have it for lunch. You can freeze the spare dough, freeze it before wrapping it in cling film and remove the cling film before defrosting it. When using frozen dough in the future, defrost for 24 hours and that will include any time it needs to prove. Okay, so now we've got the dough finished and that's in the fridge ready for later. Let's look at making the tomato pizza sauce. Now again, all of these ingredients are easy to get hold of and a great value for money. We're using tinned chopped tomatoes as the base for this sauce. First up, we're gonna grate the garlic into the olive oil. You can do this with a knife if you want, but we're gonna be using the grater for the lemon in just a second anyway. 
We're using a microplane fine grater here, which is a great investment for any chef. They're good for zesting as well as grating fine foods, but if you're just using a box grater at home, you're gonna to wanna to use the finest grating setting. Once that's all in there, we're gonna microwave it for 15 seconds. Now this allows the garlic to give all of its flavor to the olive oil and mix well into the sauce. Try smelling it just before and after you've heated it up and you'll understand what we're looking for here. In a large mixing bowl, we're gonna add our garlic oil and our tinned chopped tomatoes. This sauce is not supposed to be smooth, so there's no need to blend it or to squash any of the lumps out here. Next, we're gonna add our fresh basil. Now this recipe calls for 10 leaves, but because we're gonna chiffonade them, we need to do five at a time so there's not too many. We stack up all of the leaves and roll them into a cigar shape and then slice them as fine as possible. Make sure you're using a sharp knife. Dull knives are really dangerous to use in a kitchen and they're not effective for cooking with. With herbs, it will bruise them and damage the quality that we're looking for. Once they're chopped, we end up with strands of thin basil ready to go in the sauce. And if we repeat that process, we're gonna have the 10 leaves that we need for this recipe. Now we add lemon zest. Now the reason that I use lemon zest in this recipe is because we're using tinned chopped tomatoes. They can sometimes have a slightly metallic taste depending on the product that you've used. And by using lemon zest, it'll take away any of that taste, but doesn't leave a strong taste in the sauce when you're eating it. We need to finely grate away the zest of half the lemon just until it turns white. We don't want any of the white pith in there. All of our ingredients are in now, so let's give it a good mix. Once it's all mixed, we're gonna give it a season. So add salt and cracked black pepper and taste it and see if that's the seasoning that you're looking for. Once you're happy with it, that's the sauce ready to use later. Okay, so now it's time to take a look at how we actually shape and make our pizzas. It's important to note that you're gonna to need to take the dough out of the fridge and leave it somewhere warm for an hour before you start stretching it. It's gonna allow it to increase in size and also makes it much easier to shape and work with. Carefully remove the dough from the plate. If it's stuck to the plate, don't worry, just slowly pry it away and try and keep it as round as possible. Lay the dough in flour. This will pick up the correct amount to use for shaping and there'll be no need to put flour onto the worktops. To begin getting the shape right, gently pinch around the outside, leaving what will be the crust. The dough will stretch from its own weight as you hold it in the air. Dough is fairly forgiving and easy to work with, so long as you don't keep it still for too long. So if it's in the air, keep it moving. Once it's fairly flat, transfer it to a clean and dry worktop, and we're gonna get the last bit of stretching done. To do that, we're gonna spin it and stretch it at the same time. If the dough really doesn't want to spin on the worktop, use a little bit more flour to help it move. Keep it going until this is about 10 inches or about the size of a dinner plate. Before we begin to top it, we're gonna to lay it on a sheet of baking paper. Now this is vital to the way that it cooks later on. Top the dough with sauce. We're using about eight spoons of the tomato pizza sauce that we made earlier, but you could use barbecue sauce or garlic butter. Spread out the sauce using the back of a spoon, leaving a small area around the outside for the crust. Top with grated mozzarella cheese. Now this you can buy in packets from the supermarket or you can use mozzarella balls, but you're gonna to need to dry those out before topping by cutting them into pieces and leaving them to air out. For the margarita pizza we're making today, we're done topping at this point, but if you wanted to add more toppings, now is the time to do that. Just remember to make sure that it's sliced as thin as possible to allow it to cook quickly. And if you want to add something that's usually raw, like bacon or chicken, it needs to be cooked and completely cooled before topping onto the pizza to cook again. We're gonna remove any excess paper using a pair of scissors. This will stop the paper folding onto the top of the pizza as air moves around in the oven. And now it's time to cook. Carry the pizza to the oven on a clean chopping board. And we're gonna cook it on the paper, straight onto the wire shelf in the middle to top of the oven, which has got to be preheated to 180 degrees. Using a timer, cook the pizza for between eight and 10 minutes until the cheese has melted and the dough is turning golden. 
OK, once we're done, we're out the oven. We need to check for quality identifiers. And for pizza, those are that the base is crisp and not soggy. The dough is cooked but soft and the cheese or toppings aren't burnt. For our margarita pizza here, we're going to garnish it with more fresh basil, but we're going to slice it up first to stop the knife from bruising those leaves that we put on top. And that's our finished result. Restaurant quality pizza made easily at home. So let's explore what we can do with any leftover dough. First up, we've got a really simple dessert. We're gonna stretch out the dough in the bowl by pinching around the crust, just like we did with the pizza bases, finishing that final stretch on the board. This time we're gonna transfer it to a chopping board and we're gonna to top it with about eight spoons of warm Nutella, spreading it all the way out. Cut it in half down the middle and then roll up the two halves. Once they're rolled up, we're going to transfer these two to a baking tray and we're going to cook them in the oven for eight minutes until the dough has begun to turn golden. Another really simple starter that we could do is dough balls. We're going to split one of those pizza doughs into eight equal sized balls and cook them on a tray in the oven for eight minutes. While that's cooking, we're going to mix garlic, mayonnaise and black pepper to make a really simple dip to go with them. If you wanted to try something different, you could make garlic butter or you could heat up some of the tomato pizza sauce to go with these. Once the dough balls are done, plate them up with your dipping sauce and they're ready to serve. Thanks for watching and we hope you have some fun experimenting and adding to these recipes. And please let us know how you get on making your own pizzas on Facebook using any of the links on screen.